Hi, I'm Regan Viduslo, and this is my presentation on Shenzhen, China for Earth 107. Okay, so Shenzhen is in a very interesting location because it is a low elevated level and it's right by the Pearl River and the sea down here. Um, the coastline is a submergent one and it is a tide dominated um, one. There's a large amount of sediment and this is mostly due to shore erosion, which is a major problem right now. Okay, so for the next couple of slides, I'm not going to have my camera on so that um, we can see in full detail the infographics I have. So here is the topographic of um, Shenzhen, and it is from what can be considered like the heart of Shenzhen, which is a very densely populated area, to along the shore of the Pearl River. And here we can see not much of this is above 25 meters um, for elevation. So at this point here that I highlighted um, is only at nine, which is not great whenever you're surrounded by water and are at very high risk of flooding like Shenzhen. Here we have our start of the figures. So this is a color-coded map of Shenzhen. It is color-coded by flood hazard zones. All these little red dots are hot spots of places that are likely to and have been flooded. Um, here's the key. So as we can see, uh, definitely likely to flood, <laughs> but there's still, you know, some areas that are like fairly low. And this is from 2016, this is real data. And we have the predicted by 2030, and it is not looking any better in fact it's looking fairly worse so it can be a little hard with the hot spots but i think it demonstrates fairly well what shenzhen is in for shenzhen is a metropolitan area it has over um 13 million people close to 14 million this is going to be presumed to grow due to the growing tech industry and this industry is bringing in a lot of um, billionaires and tech moguls into the area. And it's creating a rather large disparity in wealth. And I think these two photos exemplify that really well, um, with the skyline being rather new. And these, I'm going to presume, are apartments not being the same. Um, speaking of apartments, apartments are the uh, largest form of housing in the area due to the dense um, population. Uh, Shenzhen has a very rich history with people inhabiting the area as far back as 7,000 years ago. So, much to be had here. Okay, revisiting industries. Shenzhen's industries that they've had for long before the tech industry is manufacturing and shipping. It's a global shipping hub. It's very important to not only China, but to the global trading. So it's a very high risk area. If anything were to happen, it would disrupt trade and manufacturing globally. Shenzhen is no stranger to flooding. Um, it has always happened. It's just gotten way worse over the years. I think this picture demonstrates that really well. This entire street here is flooded. Um, this is actually from the 2019 flood, uh, which really sparked a lot of people and a lot of response and citizens to um, start making a change and help mitigate these uh, floodings and heavy rainfalls. And they want to do this by implementing the Sponge City um, design. And it is to address issues of flood risk and chronic water scarcity. Um, Shenzhen is a very large area very urban area with a lot of history and unfortunately with that comes a lot of pollution especially in the water so they export I believe over 60% of their water from more rural areas um, they don't really have a good res reservoir so they wanted to kill two birds with one stone with this design so I think this really exemplifies as well um, the soil composition of Shenzhen is really unique where that it can hold a lot of water um, so 
the idea would be getting heavy rainfall or flooding, um, putting it into these water deposits or under the ground in this really saturated area between um, the urban area, the city, and the bedrock, and taking this water and putting it into aquifers and cleaning it um, so that it can be used later on. So it would both take in all the excess water and then reuse it. Shenzhen Spudge City concept is really interesting, but it's still in its infancy. So it is only in trial in certain parts of the region and has not been widely rolled out. Um, for it to be rolled out, it's going to take time. So in the meantime, they have implemented what I understand to be a very limited rollout of um, soft engineering solutions, such as um, rocks between land and water, planting mangrove trees, and mud flats to help mitigate. Okay, and now we're gonna be reading from our summary portion of the presentation. So I'll just go through these bullet points. Uh, Southern China is a subtropical climate located on the Eurasian plate and is not very close to plate boundaries. So it's not a tectonically active area. Human intervention has played a huge factor over the past 40 years in reducing the erosion of the shoreline using seawalls as well as other soft engineering methods. Uh, Shenzhen is implementing the use of a sponge city um, that will lower flooding and add to their water reservoirs. Over the past 30 years, restoration of tidal mangroves and tidal mudflats are helping to reduce flooding and CO2, and these endeavors that they're doing are called nourishment projects. Uh, unfortunately, Shenzhen only recently began setting more of a firm plan after a major flood in 2019. Um, so they're approaching this as a response not only to flooding, but as climate change as a whole. And according to the Chinese government, policy is still in its infancy, and there needs to be more research done before policy can be implemented. So there is not much out there on um, what the Chinese government plans to do in terms of response for its citizens. Okay, continuing on with our summary slides, um, I'm going to continue to read bullet points and give some more information. Uh, so a goal of Shenzhen is to make their city a smart city, and this is going to be done by implementing new smart water utilities, which is the sponge city concept, and it's just referring to all the moving parts that would be involved in making Shenzhen a sponge city. Um, so there's over 13 million people, as mentioned before, uh, and this is a major deal because um, a 2018 study found that most citizens are unprepared for natural disasters and are lacking proper education in this. And this can be contributed majorly to um, income inequalities uh, regarding access to information, access to, um, you know, uh, vehicles to get away from the city to evacuate, um, as well as being afforded the luxury of having time to research and prepare for these matters. Um, so the general um, advice given to people is to seek elevated areas. And I wanted to also mention again, highlight the income inequalities because as shown before in a previous couple of slides, um, the housing, they are apartment buildings, but they're rather low and they're not exactly very new. So where they're seeking shelter um, is definitely a concern. Okay, and now on to summary of resiliency recommendations. Shenzhen has a large population and a lot of vital industries. So there's a few things I'd like to recommend. The first would be to make well-known plans for both evacuation and recovery that considers both citizens from affluent backgrounds as well as those from less privileged ones. Um, with the recent floods going so awry, it's become more or less of a wake-up call for those of Shenzhen as well as those around the globe how important it is to prepare so we can ensure everyone's safety. And this would be by making safety plans and evacuations well-known to everyone in the general public. And I mentioned this as my number one because the Chinese government has not implemented a 
policy that's set in stone that takes into account every citizen's um, way of evacuation. Um, so I think that would be the first thing because this is a matter of um, when and not if another flood this bad happens again. Um, continuing, um, I like to continue to build shorelines and invest in ways to reduce the effects of sea level rising and flooding. Um, so the sponge city concept is a really interesting one and I really hope this goes well. Um, but they're putting all their eggs or more or less all their eggs into this sponge city basket and as mentioned before in phase one they've implemented soft engineering techniques that have been fairly effective so I think instead of phasing that out they continue to implement both the sponge city concept as well as um, more soft engineering ideas um, and that'd be about it thank you